Hello, I'm Alma Schneider. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the proud mother of four children, one of whom has Prader Willi syndrome. And I am Iris Miller. I'm a certified rehabilitation counselor and the proud mother of two children, one of whom has quadriplegic cerebral palsy and is nonverbal. In this podcast, we discuss the uncensored truth about raising children with disabilities. Prepare to laugh, cry, and hopefully learn something new. This is Two Moms, No Fluff. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our little wonderful podcast, Two Moms, No Fluff. I'm Alma Schneider, and I'm here with my lovely partner, Iris Miller. And as always, we have a a scintillating topic for you uh, that we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to let Iris uh, tell you what that is, because she's my friend. (laughs) <laughs> hello, Alma, and hello to everybody who's joining us today. Today, we're going to discuss the topic of gift giving to the fathers in our children's life. It's Father's Day and uh, in a couple of days, and we wanted to mention some of our creative ideas on how and what to uh, buy for the dads. And we tend to talk a lot about, uh, you know, the over, I guess, uh, activity that we as parents of children with disabilities need to to do in parenting in general and when we're celebrating father's day i think we need to mention maybe how much more the fathers in our children's lives have to give in order to sometimes just keep our children plainly put alive so um putting that in mind i think that my first contribution to the conversation is talking about gifts that promote relaxation and giving uh, the fathers in our life anything and everything that can help them kind of rejuvenate and rest a bit. And in that category, I want to mention, maybe it's like a small fishing trip with their friends. So it's not something that costs any money, but you just give them the liberty of spending the day out on their own. And it can be a, a massage or a flexology session and a night out with the friends, whatever it is that is putting the attention and the time for the father, for himself to just replenish. Very nice. Relaxation is very important. Um, It's also kind of nice for dads to reconnect with their friends, as you mentioned, on, you know, a little trip, not too long, not too long, Um, but a trip, uh, a day trip, as you mentioned, or going to, uh, we have a salt float here where I live in Montclair. It can even be something solitary where they're just gone for the day doing exactly what they want to do and really thinking, helping them think about what have you not been able to do um, or what would you like to do more and really process it with them? Because just as we talk about giving gifts to our children, having other people just give them gifts that they really may not benefit from or may not really want, it's important to involve the dads in the process. And that doesn't have to mean it's a it's um, not a surprise, but you can get a sense of what they might be interested in. Um, I think anyone who knows our family knows that um, Brian is very interested in golf and watching golf and playing golf and talking about golf and hanging out with his golf buddies. So my husband will be doing that as part of his day on Father's Day. And I always ask, what would you what would you like to do? I don't just assume. I think that for dads of kids with disabilities, you know, the idea of a mug uh, isn't always the best, you know, a mug that says best dad ever isn't necessarily what they really want for Father's Day. And we also have like 8,000 mugs in my house. So please, you know, don't ever give anybody in my family a mug unless it uh, says one in six support on it or two moms no fluff or something like that. We don't want to uh, to to add clutter. A lot of times our pair our families have so much stuff in the house uh, because of the child with the disability or just if we're clutterers uh, like me. So thinking out of the box for something that is meaningful, that will provide relaxation. Um, I, I think it's it's really important to involve them in the process. And that could mean a million different things, but you need to talk to the dad or the person who takes on the dad role in your house about that. 
Yes, Alma, uh, capitalizing on what you just said, I think experiences in general are, are important uh, for the fathers in our lives. And uh, talking about that, it can be something very simple. Sometimes it's just like a, a small picnic with the family. And uh, in our situation, uh, my husband is a baseball fan. I don't think anyone else in the family is committed to that sport. But even on Father's Day, like paying those $6 tickets to a minor league uh, game and sitting, uh, you know, somewhere and just spending the day in an activity that he prefers, uh, it can be a nice, uh, a nice thing to do. I uh, believe that we all know what is or are the experiences that our uh, spouses <laughs> are interested in or the fathers in our children's lives. And planning ahead of time can allow them to enjoy a day like that. Even if it's not in the category of relaxation, it's still fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there's a lot of research that shows that dads, actually not a ton of research, but there is some research because there isn't uh, a ton of research about this topic, but that the dads typically don't get the one-on-one -on -one time, especially with the child with the disability as much as uh, mothers do. And it's just you know, it's a fact. It's, you know, been researched. And that can often lead the dads to sort of, you know, step back and uh, feel less confident with the child. So bonding and doing activities with the child really is um, important for bonding. So maybe for your family, having a scheduled activity, having some kind of an activity where the dad is uh, with the child with the disability or children with the disabilities, doing something fun and meaningful, um, but supported is something that would be beneficial, you know, and, and appreciated by the dad on Father's Day to have some really nice quality time doing something fun, not something medical or something, you know, that is going to be a challenge, but something that is just pure fun with the child might be something that the dad um, is interested in. So again, we need to ask the dads what, what they want to do. And what we do in our family is we sort of break it up. Um, we have, you know, my husband does what he wants to do in the morning with his friends. And then later in the afternoon or at dinner, we all have a dinner together, or we all participate in some activity together as a family, but so that it's all in one day. So it's like a perfect day of, um, of doing exactly what we want, but also, uh, doing what we want alone and doing something that we want to do with the family is something that might be an option. Yes, so that brings me to another category of gifts and that is the uh, gear and uh, buying something that allows an activity to happen. And it can be something that is dedicated specifically for the father and something that he does on his own. And it can also be a combination of an activity that he can do with the child with a disability. And uh, the list can be as simple as buying, uh, you know, paint brushes and uh, and uh, watercolors that uh, are good quality for the the father, and maybe an extension to wear on a uh, baseball cap, so the child can actually use their head and paint with the father at the same time, and then they can both be focused on the same thing together. The active or gear for activities can be very elaborate and complicated. If uh, you have a father in your life that likes running, buying a, uh, an adapted uh, jogger stroller that is adapted to people with disabilities can allow that sport to be more inclusive. And then a, a time that would usually be spent out of the house alone can be spent together with a child with a disability. In, in that uh, span between the little paintbrush and the jogger stroller, obviously, there is a, a wide gap of prices and uh, time and attention that need to be spent on the purchase. But thinking of the things around that space and the gear in general is a good category to think about the hobbies and interests and buy something to support those. Yes, I love that. Absolutely true. Because sometimes it's hard to, to participate in these activities. As, as, and reach the full fun potential if you don't have the gear. So that is a, a great idea. Um, something else that is what I consider the most meaningful thing is uh, having uh, the child write 
a meaningful card about what they appreciate about the dad. And if they are unable to do that for whatever reason, having um, the other family members kind of brainstorm on and think about all the different things that the dad does to make everyone's life better um, or things that you like or love about the dad's behavior um, and make it like you can make it into a list. You can make it into um, an art card where you're just drawing the different, you know, uh, things that you love about the dad or appreciate about the dad. But that's something that's really special and can even be framed and put on the wall as a reminder and just something that's that's really meaningful talking, really focusing on things that other people might not even consider uh, something that is contributing to the fun or being a part of a family or making people feel good about themselves or helping people be healthier, whatever it is, the little the little tiny things that that um, brighten your day that the dad does and putting it putting it on paper because a lot of times we don't have the time or the inclination to kind of sit down and recite you know or acknowledge or appreciate all those things that are being done but putting it you know really putting it on paper can really be meaningful to the dad but also for the rest of the family to really look at it and say wow like he really does do a lot or hmm he really doesn't do that much. So we're going to have to change this and focus on it, but it can be a very interesting, it can be a very interesting process. So um, dad, start thinking of things that we can put in the letter, if in the card, if they're not already uh, very present for us in the front of our brains. Yeah, I want to say that anything that is kind of do it yourself is really great, especially when you can really in, uh, encourage your children to be a part of it, whether it's uh, creating a card or building a gift uh, on their own, whatever is the child's kind of natural tendency, even if it's just building a structure in with Legos that might last for only one day, but that would be the structure that is dedicated to the father on Father's Day. And I think that um, for children who, uh, who have very limited ability to participate in the process, Sometimes all it needs is just like taking those uh, finger paints and smearing it on their feet and kind of stamping their feet as a frame to a page and in that page really thanking the father on behalf of the child for the things that they do for the child and the child cannot mention or count or you know write down for them so you have the child's participation some children are able to like open the palms of their hands and you can do the same thing with feet and hands and if they can't do either you can always take those little stamp uh, pads and just do fingerprints and, and do the fingerprints along the line and those little fingerprints can be decorated as uh, smiley faces or little flowers and then the child is also a part uh, physically a part of the gifting uh, for father's day yeah absolutely as much as the child can be a part of it that's that's always meaningful and i think that you know even if you know we're, we're talking about things that cost money we're talking about things that don't have to cost money but sometimes we have so much, you know, un so, so many unexpected surprises, we'll call them, uh, that happen and it can sort of ruin the, you know, the plan for Father's Day or the gift giving or the uh, making of the gift beforehand. So, you know, we're, we're going to come out with this episode, you know, very close to, to Father's Day, but going forward, really maybe making these gifts um, or purchasing these gifts or whatever it is that you're doing way in advance, like even doing it in like December or February so that when the time comes, something doesn't interfere. But if that does happen and you are very close to Father's Day and there is nothing going on, you can just buy or make a simple cake or do nothing, just have a regular dinner and have everybody go around the table talking about what is meaningful for the dad, what the dad has done this year or in general and how they are helpful and appreciated and acknowledged for what they do for the family. So that's you know something else that can be done. I just wanna mention one other thing, when couples uh, get divorced or separated, um, it can be awkward um, to, cause a lot of time, 
a lot of the time the mom is telling the kids, you know, do this, do that for the dad, you know, because Father's Day is coming, you need to write a card, you need to get a gift or whatever it is um, to the, uh, you know, if there are other children in the family or the child with the disability. And uh, when there is a uh, separation, that might feel awkward, but it's important to, you know, for some families to keep that tradition going, even if you're separated. And also there is um, loss of life. If the, if the dad isn't around and, um, you know, not a part of the child's life for whatever reason, whether it's a death or, or just whatever the reason is that there is no father in the picture, it's important to talk with the child um, uh, for what, in whatever capacity they're able to, you know, be a part of a discussion or simply to acknowledge that this might be a hard day. This might be a hard day for them um, and to not just not talk about it, uh, to really talk about the feelings that are associated with this and maybe make it an extra special day with you and your child um, because they can't celebrate Father's Day in a way that they may like. Yes, and I think it's also a good plan to discuss with your child the role that they want to have maybe in the future as a parent uh, when they celebrate Father's Day. Uh, with the assumption that they can rewrite the script if uh, if it's necessary, and that can be very healing to make uh, plans like that for the future. Um, Alma, I want to go back to like uh, a couple of my last ideas for today before we finish this episode, but I wanted to to mention that. Uh, pictures, photos, family photos have a great value on Father's Day and the use of them can be infinite in, in the sense that, as you mentioned, they can be printed out on mugs if you guys don't have enough mugs at home like Alma. But uh, with the family photos, again, you can make a, an artistic uh, picture frame and put a photo from that current year. So you have something from Father's Day 2024. It might not seem like a lot at 2024, but comes 2034, then it's a, a one, one good souvenir from the past. I remember that at one point in time, we made uh, cufflinks for a shirt for my husband with the picture of our two children. And that was an awesome kind of conversation starter for him at work because people would always notice those uh, cufflinks and uh, it wasn't only a good conversation started about uh, our family but about people with disabilities and what and how the company makes an effort to include and support families like ours so that's uh, another idea that I wanted to put out there. Great and calendars, calendars are another great idea with the pictures of uh, you know through the year which is always fun and it's practical. Yes, and uh, my last idea for the day, and that's uh, information. So sharing information uh, in the form of either a newspaper subscription, a, a book in a particular topic, or uh, watching together a movie about something can all be great ways to kind of uh, focus on a topic or an idea that is relevant to the father or to the family as a whole. So for example, before we built our wheelchair accessible house, uh, one of the things that uh, I gifted my husband was a, a book about uh, building adapted homes for you know, people with disabilities. And that was a great resources, resource for us back then. Again, depending on what it is that uh, your child's diagnosis is, there are so many magazines and newspapers out there about specific disabilities and about specific uh, inclusion effort so you can uh, create a subscription for your husband to kind of break the cycle of isolation a, a bit. Absolutely. And don't forget people who play the role as father who may not be the father, but who have been active in your life. It's a great opportunity to, to thank them and to let them know how meaningful their participation in, in your family's life is. So that could be a, the grandfather, that could be an uncle, that could just be a, your neighbor a friend who's been helpful um, in those kind of paternal roles. So don't forget about them. They're just as important. And I think that's all I have for, for today. And we would love to hear your ideas. So please let us know what you're planning to do uh, by putting comments, uh, by 
um, reaching out to us and uh, we can put them if you don't want to place them on our on our various uh, Facebook social media sites. And um, we will hope that everyone has a wonderful Father's Day. Yes, happy Father's Day to everyone and then we'll see you on our next episode. Thank you, Alma. Thank you. For more information, please go to www.twomomsnofluff.com. Thank you. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give it a five-star rating so more people can hear it. Thank you.